All right, now the clock shows 420, so why don't we go ahead and get started. This is the infrastructure team project update, so hopefully you're in the right room, and hopefully I'm in the right room. Um, I'm Clark Boylan, I'm the current infrastructure PTL uh, for the OpenStack P infrastructure project. Um, if you're not familiar with what we do, we, we build and run the systems that help us develop OpenStack, and, and now more than just OpenStack. Um, that includes tooling like CI tooling to test the software, but also the code review system to, to so that our developers can review the code that they write. Uh, we collaboration tools are a very common thing that we try to embrace and, and build upon. So we run list servers and etherpads and wikis and, and so on as well. There's a, a broad amount of software that we run to aid the development of OpenStack. Um, so one of the things a lot of people may not realize is that we run everything on top of donated OpenStack cloud resources, which is, which is wonderful. We, we dog food OpenStack, um, and we're also very grateful to all of the clouds that give us resources to run on top of. In, in alphabetical order here, we've got an ARM CI cloud, InterNAP, Limestone Networks, Lenaro provides some ARM resources now, OVH, Packethost and Platform 9, Rackspace, Vexhost. These are all public, private, sometimes somewhere in between clouds that give us resources to, to run the services that we do and to, to test the software that we're testing. Um, so thank you to all of them. Um, over time, these clouds come and go. We, we add new ones, some, some leave for various reasons, but we're always very grateful to, to have those resources available to us. Um, one of the things I'm particularly excited about that m you may not know about yet is that we have ARM64 test resources now. Uh, about back in February, the Lenaro team gave us access to a very small amount of resources on an OpenStack cloud that they're running. Uh, they've since expanded that to two regions. We've also added a second cloud provided through this, this ARM CI effort, and I believe it's hosted on a packet host, ARM bare metal, and there's a group running OpenStack there to expose those resources to us, uh, which is exciting. We have three ARM64 cloud regions that we can run tests on today. It's still a somewhat limited set of resources, but they're available. If there's something that you'd really like to see target ARM64, we can work with you to, to get that testing done. Um, another thing that might not be super user visible but is very important to us is that we're working to modernize our config management. Uh, since the conception of the infrastructure team, the, um, the tooling that we've used has primarily been based around Puppet. We've gone through multiple Puppet upgrades and we're currently in a three to four transition. Um, and then after four, we would be continuing on to five. But what we found is that those upgrades are costly. Puppet hasn't made the transition across major releases of Puppet simple. Um, and on top of that, many of our team members have kind of shifted interest over time, particularly now that Zool is so Ansible focused and many of us work on and, and rely on Ansible day to day. Um, Ansible is quickly becoming far more familiar to us, and it's, it's in our interest as individuals to work with Ansible more than to try and uplift the, the existing Puppet infrastructure. So the plan today is to convert to Ansible, <clears throat> excuse me, convert to Ansible for configuration management, which, which is nice because we're, we're familiar with Ansible, but then to use containers as a, a packaging primitive so that we can bottle up things like this is the stuff we want installed, and then have Ansible say, execute and run that. Um, we've already had a couple milestones with that. We're running services without Puppet today. Uh, there are no services running on containers yet, but that's planned as well. Um, something to keep in mind is that this transition will take time, so Puppet will stick around likely longer than we'd like, but that's the reality, which means we're continuing to work on upgrading to Puppet 4. That way we have an out for those services that don't immediately move over to Ansible and, and containers. Um, so Zool, you probably heard a lot about that at this conference. Um, by the way, that's an ASCII Zool logo, which is kind of cool. Um, Zool is now an independent project that actually happened at the previous summit, but we continue to, to work together a lot because there's also significant overlap in the teams and we rely on Zool to do much of the work that the infrastructure team does. Um, I think this is actually working really well for the infrastructure team and for Zool itself. It's, it's allowed Zool to grow on its own, 
with, with new users, but we've maintained the, a coupling there and, and we work together. Uh, one of the key ways that we've been working together, which I think is, is great to illustrate this, is we basically act as beta testers for Zool. Uh, we, we update Zool and OpenStack infrastructure, make sure it works for a day or two, and then Jim can go ahead and tag a release for Zool with a, a fairly high degree of confidence that it's not gonna break in, in catastrophic ways for other users. Uh, we happen to be a very big Zool installation. If it works for us, it'll probably work for you too. Um, another big Zool thing that's happened in, in OpenStack recently that was largely driven by OpenStack itself, but the infrastructure team, particularly Andreas, has helped quite a bit with, is the move of configuration of the jobs into the projects themselves. This was motivated by the Python 3 transition because OpenStack needs to be able to switch things from Python 2 to Python 3 and not needing to go through the infra team to do that is, is valuable. Um, yeah, so we won't be blocking that transition. The, the job config is in repo. Each project can kind of manage that as they're ready and Python 3 able. Unfortunately, Due to the way secrets handling works, we've also got a few jobs that have to remain in the infrastructure configs just because things like publishing to PyPI and so on require access to secrets, and we've been the keeper of those secrets historically. Um, so top-level project hosting. You may have heard about Airship, Starling X, Zool, Kata, so on. One of the things we wanna do is, is become homes for these projects that are not OpenStack. Uh, historically, you may have heard of StackForge. We've, we've always been welcoming to projects that aren't OpenStack, but it may not always have been clear that not all of the projects we host are not OpenStack. And we want to kind of improve that situation. And, and we've updated things like mailing list hosting, documentation hosting to allow us to host the, I believe we're hosting the Starling X docs now. We host mailing lists for all of these projects, Airship, Kata, Starling X, Zool, uh, with their own, uh, I don't wanna say branded, but their own, under their own domains that don't say OpenStack on them to make it clear that they're not OpenStack. The next evolution of this is what we're calling OpenDev. Um, we've taken ownership of this domain, opendev.org, which will allow us to host all of these projects under a neutral, neutrally branded domain uh, and services. Uh, and then that way it's clear that OpenStack is no longer special when it comes to the infrastructure team. Um, effectively, we will become the, the OpenDev infrastructure team rather than the OpenStack infrastructure team. Um, while this is making OpenStack less special, OpenStack, we don't expect OpenStack to go anywhere. It's still gonna be our largest user simply by the fact that it's been around. There's lots of resources that they're using. They know how to use the system effectively, and I expect them to continue to, to, continue to take advantage of that. Um, but also keep in mind that this is gonna be a slow transition. There's, because we don't want to you know, kick OpenStack aside, we wanna maintain that healthy relationship. We're, we're gonna move slowly and make sure we don't break them. Um, so expect services one or two at a time to kind of transition as we figure out what that looks like. In the kind of more immediate future, we'd like to, to continue pushing on the modernization of config management. I think that's really important for the long-term sustainability of this effort. Um, if, if we're not gonna be able to support Puppet long-term, we shouldn't be using it. Um, the Garrett upgrade continues to be a big item, which is tied into that modernization of config management. Uh, Monty has plans to take advantage of the container deployments to make that easier. Uh, we'd like to improve IRC bot systems. We, we recognize that we've grown to the point where Freenode is clunky, especially with the number of channels we need to talk to, and, and there are tools that we can use more effectively to improve that. Uh, and then, of course, OpenDev. That's gonna be a slow, slow transition, but it's gonna be an important one that we need to continuously push on and, and keep moving. So that's the update I had, plenty of time. Um, this is how to contact us. We're on Freenode at Pound OpenStack Infra. That may change with the, the OpenDev transition, but that hasn't changed yet, so this is where you can still find us. Um, you can email us at the mailing list, openstackinfra at list.openstack.org. We're here at the summit, though the summit's almost over. Uh, 
And then we've got our, our documentation here. You can poke around, take a look. And feel free to ask questions if you've got them. Anyone? Going once? All right then. Well, thank you for your time. That's the infrastructure update.